the show to further expand coverage of more newsworthy events is Ambassador Musa Mohammed Token. Good morning to you, Ambassador, sir. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Now, now to begin with, before we look at some other coverage on the front pages of the dailies, it is going to be the first year in office anniversary of the president come tomorrow. More sectorial briefings are going to be underscored from different ministries under his administrations about the achievements on the, the first year in office of President Bola Metinibu. How would you assess his journey so far? Well, the uh, unfolding of the march of progress have just started. It's just a quarter of unfolding the march. And already, we have already recorded substantial progress in the journey so far. Uh, for the first time in Nigeria, just barely after one month of uh, uh, President Bola Amitinibu in office, he was able to generate over one trillion naira, which is very unprecedented in the history of this country. And um, he was able immediately to release that fund about over 90% of the resources to the state government so that they should be able to execute some project that is uh, aimed at uh, leveraging the, and mitigating the, 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 the suffering of the people after the declaration of uh, uh, the fuel uh, subsidy removal. So uh, several, uh, you know, achievements have been recorded in the area of uh, infrastructural development and uh, education, uh, health care, housing and so many other areas that is uh, meant to improve the standard of living of the masses of uh, the country. So uh, just a quarter of the journey so far, so huge record has already been consolidated and uh, established for the betterment of Nigerian citizenry. Now, while some sections of Nigerians applaud President Bola Metinibu, some have offered knocks and quite recently was in the Hajj subsidy. Over 19 billion naira was used as subsidy to subsidize the air travel fees for intended pilgrimages for Hajj. Many criticized President Bola Metinibu's government for taking such a decision. What's your opinion on this development? Well, this is just the beginning. There are so many other projects and programs that, that, that will be unfolded. And uh, so some, people, some people are looking at the the, 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 the money, the monetary aspect of it, without also taking into cognizance that uh, the travel also is in line to promote interrelationship between Nigeria and uh, Saudi Arabia, and that will also boost the economic of the country. Because by going there, other people apart from the pilgrimage, will try to a kind of uh, invest to boost their financial capability and that will open another way to consolidate the economy of the country. So that is one aspect of, uh, the, uh, one aspect of it. There are so many other projects, policies and programs that will be implemented. So to me, it, it's, it's very okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, Ambassador Mohammed Musa II has also held some privileged positions in terms of the All Progressive Congress APC. He is currently the national president of the All Progressive Congress Initiative for Good Governance, APC IGG. He is also the national coordinator, One Nation on Fertilizer for Renewed Hope Agenda of President Bola Metinibu, and uh, the Deputy President General North Coalition of All APC Support Groups in Nigeria. Now, in this honored and esteemed positions, we'll look at some developments as it concerns the northern part of the country as it greets the dailies this morning. Well, quite prominently in the last 48 hours has been the Kanu Emirates Tussle, the first newspaper and the Nigerian Tribune, uh, two of those newspapers that have more developments on the situation in Kano State. On the first newspaper, its front page has the lead story. Dramatic twist in Kanu Emirates saga. Court orders eviction of Adobayaro from palace, bars him, others from emirship as tension mounts. On the Nigerian Tribune, you have a similarity in that focus. As the lead story reads, court orders police to evict Bayaro 
from Kanu Palace, bars him for others from parading themselves as emirs. Security uncovers plot to attack assembly complex in Portland palaces. Kanu government begs President Tinubu to move Bayaro out of the state. Deputy governor apologizes to NSA, withdraws allegations of convenience. Mon, this is on page three. Ambassador, I don't know if you have taken time to review some of these developments in Kano, but most of them were based on allegations, one of which has been withdrawn by the deputy governor, who has now apologized to the national security advisor, Malam Nuhu Rabadu. What's your take on the situation in Kano? Well, uh, people have to investigate and confirm the reality of issues before they come out in, on media to say it. Well, even if you break a plate, even if you later you are able to bring it together, you should know that you will not take it back to the, the, the former standard. So uh, people should have a kind of a concerted effort in trying to dip down the train of information before they actually release it on the, in the ear. The position of a national security advisor is such a position that is so, uh, you know, integral in the governance of a, of a, of a country. So uh, a kind of direct accusation of such nature uh, is very, very uncalled for. So uh, thank God he has already apologized. And uh, I think uh, uh, the, the NSA has also had that. But uh, one thing that is very, very pertinent is the peaceful coexistence of the people of Kano State. Kano State is one of the major commercial area uh, or co uh, state in Nigeria. S to that effect, whatsoever affects the uh, 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 Kano state and its people virtually affects the whole of uh, Nigeria. So therefore, the people of Kano state should take into cognizance the peaceful coexistence of Kano state because Economic draw, uh, growth and economic development can only thrive where there is peaceful coexistence. In the case of uh, the palace and the tussle there in the palace, I think they should revert, uh, revert back to uh, the court of law, where is our custodian of justice and equity. So uh, people should also try uh, in as much as possible to be able to see that as an act of God, all these tussles should be, you know, uh, averted. Now, the tussle it itself, uh, Ambassador, is the position of many who say that Ado Bayaro feels aggrieved because uh, Mohammed Sanusi II took that position from his father whilst he was the 14th Emir of Kanu, and he feels as though uh, the former governor, Governor Al Habd Lai Abganduje, took that position to somewhat compensate him. That is why he is one out of the five dethroned emirs who is insistent on remaining in the palace. How do you balance that sort of political grievance or tension when it comes to a, a traditional seat or a first-class chieftaincy in this perspective in lines with the law like you have called for? Well, one thing that is very, very integral and uh, is very, very important for uh, the well-being of Kano state people is the need for them to revert to the law and do the needful. They should try in as much as pos possible to eschew any activities that is going to, uh, you know, uh, result into, uh, uh, you know, destruction of life and uh, properties. That is in that aspect. In the other hand, uh, the issue of uh, Kano is such issue that um, um, is, you know, very, very much limited to the ruling, the, the, the ruling house themselves. However, justice should be done because justice is the court of every, uh, you know, uh, foundation. Where justice is lacking, definitely there's going to be chaos. So they should look at it from that angle. I don't want to go deep into uh, accusation, but I know 
uh, he was removed on the basis that uh, uh, he was brought by someone X and today that person is not there and I think that is the only basic accusation on the the, 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 the Emir uh, Adobayaro but uh, in the other hand as I as have earlier said they should prioritize looking at the peaceful coexistence of the people of Kano state and they are all religious people they should look at the dictates of uh, you know the jurisdiction and the dictates of Islam as a religion they should revert back to uh, their superior they are learning uh, 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 people in, in, in the Islamic uh, jurisprudence and try to come up with a, a lasting solution that will make Kano State uh, peaceful and hitch free. Now, one more subject on the front pages of the Daily this morning as we look to discuss with Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokin is also on the situation with internally displaced persons in the north. One out of a dozen newspapers this morning, the Nigerian News Direct has that in its lead story. On its front page, beneath the masthead, you'd find the story, Northern Governors pledge 5% budget allocation to help over 4 million IDPs. Northern Governors pledge 5% budget allocation to help over 4 million IDPs. Now, you have been in leadership position at different stratas of the APC as a political party and much in line with initiatives in agriculture in the general North coalition of APC support groups for renewed hope agenda. The North has been prided as one of the places for some of the best agricultural produce you can find in Nigeria. Mm. But following President Bola Tinubu's declaration of a state and emergency of food security, it has been more about betting projects that would help the North regain its place of pride as a key contributor to Nigeria's agricultural GDP. Uh, what do you make of this development with a 5% budget allocation to solve the situations of internally displaced persons in the North? Food security is one of the greatest challenges globally. And uh, Mr. President has used his skill and acumen in the you know, leadership uh, you know, experience and uh, he was able to declare a state of um, emergency on security, uh, food security, considering the fact that uh, food security is a global issue that needs to be dealt with and uh, uprooted from the root. And uh, a such step staking is to go a long way to also solve some of the insecurity challenges we are facing in the north. Because um, dealing with uh, food security means uprooting the cause of uh, 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 insecurity as well. Because if people are hungry, they are angry. But dealing with the, the situation that will make food available on the table of people by supporting a robust agricultural productivity, I think is a very bold step. And uh, he have taken steps to bring about all strategies and skill that is going to augment the productivity capacity in the in terms of agriculture. You have also as well bring in someone from the Northeast, which is uh, Senator Awoka Kiari, who is the Honorable Minister of uh, Agriculture and Food Security. And you can see of recent is uh, a, a kind of synergy between Saudi Arabia and Nigeria. And that collaboration is also targeted at uh, improving uh, the agricultural productivity in Nigeria, which is going to yield a very productive, you know, and uh, strengthen the economic of the country. Because by increased productivity in the agricultural structure, uh, 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 sector, sector, it means also putting the standard of living of the masses at a high level. So, uh, Mr. President is doing everything within the tenets of the law to ensure that uh, that aspect of agriculture gain a very meaningful development. Because agriculture is, from time immemorial, is the provider 
of uh, the highest provider of employment. If people are employed, uh, they will have the financial capacity to uh, raise their houses, sponsor their uh, wards in the schools, uh, you know, and they will be able to solve some of their financial challenges, which will reduce the insecurity that is bedeviling the northern part of the country. And um, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture has also created an enabling environment where uh, some other solution providers across the world. I know vividly the issue of Linico. Linico is a, is a, is a, is a, a kind of a international solution provider and uh, they are into Netherlands African meat technology uh, technology partnership they are into uh, uh, agricultural beef value chain and agriculture uh, agro parks and all these are ways of uh, you know channeling a solution in the areas of uh, employment opportunities and agricultural productivity well, uh, Ambassador, I'm very afraid time always is a constraint when we have some of these discussions. But we're hoping that going into the coming days and the coming weeks, whenever you're within the town mm -hmm. or within FCT or even virtually, we can have more, especially in line with the One Nation, One Fertilizer project, which you are coordinator on. Yes. All right, then. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, time is never our friend when we discuss this, but Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokan has given us his word and going into the coming days, he'll be here to talk about the One Nation, One Fertilizer for Renewed Hope Agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu and all